Today is Wednesday, June 10, 2015, and we are here today to interview Sister um, Marianne Bennett. Um, our first question is, we would like to know about your journey of faith. What led you to the religious life? I grew up in a very loving Catholic family. I remember at a very early age, my mother every day sitting down to pray the rosary. On Sundays we went to Mass as a family and often picked up our grandparents along the way. I attended St. Bridget's School in Midland for grades 1 through 8. We were taught by the Sisters of Mercy. I attended a public school for the ninth grade because Midland did not have a Catholic school at the time. During the summer of my fresh, between my freshman and sophomore year, God intervened in a rather spectacular way to lead me back to the Sisters of Mercy. My parents and my younger brother Tom traveled to Minnesota to see my brother Bob receive the habit of the Holy Cross priest. After the ceremony, we left him knowing we would not have contact for the next year during his novitiate. I was very sad because Bob and I were very close. We took a little trip on the way home, and while at Mount Rushmore, something happened that still amazes me today. My mom was writing postcards and looked up and asked me if I wanted to invite someone to the cottage the next week after we got home. Without a moment's hesitation and with absolutely no thought process on my part, I blurted out, can I ask two people? Somewhat surprised, my mom questioned, who? I immediately said, the Apple Twins. We had been friends in grade school, but we had not done anything for an entire year during the ninth grade. I went to the public school and they took a bus each day to St. Mary's High School in Bay City. To this day, <clears throat> I believe that God took control of my voice and said their name. I invited them, they accepted, and we had a great week together at the cottage. At the end of the week, my parents asked me if I wanted to go to St. Mary's, and I said yes. God had directed my path so that once again I would be in a school taught by the Sisters of Mercy. I have now been a Sister of Mercy myself for 55 years and every time I see a picture of Mount Rushmore <laughs> I smile at, <clears throat> at how God intervened in my life. That moment changed the entire direction of my life. Now how long of a distance was it between Midland and Bay it City. was um, uh, 20 to 25 miles. Um, I walked a mile each day to get to the bus. It was a bus that often took the Dow workers back and forth between Midland and Bay City. Oh, so it wasn't a school bus? No, it, it wasn't was a, a school bus. bus. It was a public bus and um, there were actually six of us that went over there. And, um, and I also want to add that those twins, Mary and Rita Apple, also entered the convent with me and are among Mer UDM's uh, or Mercy College's 1965 graduates and we've been friends since we were in the first grade. <laughs> That's terrific. So for you there was never any option other than to join. You never thought of going joining another religious um, order. It was always going to be the Sisters of Mercy? Well, <laughs> for me it was. But I had a great aunt who was a Grand Rapids Dominican. Mm -hmm. And about a month before I was all set to, or to enter the Mercies, she was up at our cottage. She took me in the bedroom. She took off her habit, put it on me, and oh. thought that if I saw how cute I looked <laughs> in the Dominican habit, I would change my mind. But that I had been with the Mercies you know, all my life in school, and, and that's where I wanted to, to enter. Now, I'm curious about that. Um, I think one of the other sisters told us that pre-Vatican II, um, sisters were not allowed to even go into the homes of their families. 
So this was after Vatican II, where she was able to go into a cottage with her family? Um, well, yes. She Must used to come been. to our home in Midland to visit. Did she? She played cards with us. And oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And then they were progressive. <laughs> progressive order. Actually, in that regard, they were ahead of the Mercies, really, um, because the Mercies did not go home. Okay. Prior to Vatican II. Um, what did you study as you were going through your training? Well, I always wanted to be a teacher, mm -hmm. and so um, I traveled that track through the college, earning a Bachelor of Science degree, and then later a Master of Arts degree at Eastern Michigan University. A master uh, in what what field? Uh, education. Just education? Yeah. Okay. Kind of and generic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your role then at Mercy College? At Mercy College, I taught in the Developmental Services Center, and um, I, I taught returning adults and also students who uh, were having difficulties with reading and study skills. Um, there were other areas too. There was math, there was science, but uh, reading and study skills were what I taught. And it was a very rewarding experience because some of the students would come back and tell me about a test they had taken in another class and they had gotten the highest grade they had ever gotten because they had now learned and applied some of the study skills that they had never been taught. Oh, that is rewarding. Um, can you give us some other uh, tell us about y y your time at Mercy College. Do you have any other stories to tell us? Um, well, <laughs> how long were you there, <coughs> first of all? As a teacher, I was there four years. Four years. Okay. 1976 to seven, well, uh, three, three and a half. Um, and, uh, um, but more of my stories have to do with being a student. Okay. So, <laughs> how was it like being a student? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, the very first day that we entered, we received the little postulant um, outfit. Mm -hmm. You probably have seen pictures of it. Yes. And that that evening, we after our parents left and everything, we were supposed to go to chapel and practice because the next day at mass we were going to receive the little net veil that went with the postulant outfit. Well, I was in my bedroom unpacking my suitcase and getting all settled and somehow I missed the time or whatever that they were going to go to chapel to practice. So I'm all settled in my room and I walked out in the hall and there was no one around. And so That's what I remember, I, I really remember running, uh, this was in those little three, three little buildings yes. that they had. Yes. I remember running across to the first door I could see and literally jumping a hedge <laughs> <laughs> in that little postulant outfit and trying to find where the chapel was because that took you into the basement. And so I still had to find the chapel, and I oh, I was so embarrassed to be walking. Everybody was in the pew, and it was all quiet, and they were going through everything, and in I came. But I still can remember jumping that hedge. <laughs> <laughs> that, we'd like a video of that. <laughs> Another uh, constant memory that I have of Mercy College is I lost my two front teeth ice skating on the pond. <laughs> So I have a dive. constant uh, <laughs> reminder. reminder. I wasn't. I was. I was a pretty good skater. I wasn't doing anything fancy, but I was talking in a group, and then I just turned to leave the group to go skate some more. And I don't know what happened, but were you in your habit? Yes, uh, I was a novice at the time, so, so I was in the full habit. So you could have no. Well, we, no, we. Pulled up, pulled them up, and pinned them. 
Oh, okay. So I, I really don't think it was that. I'm not sure what. It seemed like my heel maybe hit a, a hole or something. But oh, yeah. in any case, I found myself at Mount Carmel in the emergency room and <laughs> have had a constant reminder <laughs> of those days <laughs> on the pond. Um, <clears throat> I loved walking down the Arboretum to the grotto, especially oh, yes. when the roses were in bloom. And um, <clears throat> a little later here, we'll probably get to s some of my uh, uh, teaching experiences. Um, but I've been at Mercy High School for the past 34 years. And um, about two years ago, we renovated one of the courtyards. And it's it was professionally done. It's very beautiful. And the statue of Our Lady was totally refurbished. And so uh, last year we, we kind of brought back um, what used to happen on the old campus at, at the grotto in the arbor. So now our students at the end of baccalaureate mass, uh, the parents, everybody stays in the auditorium. They have a screen set up with technology showing that courtyard, which is at the other end of the building. And all the, st the graduates process out, receive a rose, walk quietly through the school and out to that courtyard and go up and present um, a rose to Mary in that lovely new courtyard. So we've been doing this for, for two years now and bringing back that tradition that had been so beautiful at on the old campus. And that's something that the girls will remember. That's probably a very special remembrance of Mercy High School. Mm -hmm. And we can see it in the auditorium on the big screen. Oh, They have right. the cameras right. showing, you know, the all set up so that, um, so that we see them. And then they come back and process back into the auditorium and, and then we kind of finish up the, the evening. So that's, that's very lovely. Um, one, just one other story I remember about the college is the men, uh, the maintenance men, ch chasing all over the campus the two swans that were about to fly over the fence. And they were trying to catch them because they would keep their wings clipped in order for them to stay on the pond. And, um, and uh, this one Saturday, I, we were all hanging out the windows, <laughs> watching the men run all over, trying to catch them. I mean, they're large. It's kind of hard to, <laughs> to do. But um, they finally were successful in catching the swans. And <laughs> so you had two swans on campus all the time? We had two swans. Mm -hmm. wow. There was so a little rowboat out there that we sometimes went out in. And then we ice skated in the winter, and and there were chairs, there were lawn chairs around the pond too. So it was a, a great place to go out and just sit and read, or or you just know, to be alone, yeah. to meditate. Mm -hmm. to, we also to played study. baseball out there on the side lawn near the pool uh, or the uh, pond. Um, so again, we would just. <laughs> put our veil back and pin our, our habit up and start swinging the bat. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. Um, as a Sister of Mercy, what impact did your work have on the students at Mercy College? You sort well, of told us a yes, little bit. Yes, um, I, I mean it was very rewarding work, um, but um, I, as I don't know if it was because I was a sister, um, but you know, students would come and talk about very various problems or issues. Um, I remember a student came one time who was uh, from a culture that had arranged marriages, and she did not want to marry the the man that her family had chosen for her. 
and she came to me just before our Christmas break and was sharing this and and she wasn't sure what she was going to do and and I don't know what she did but I never saw her again oh. um, but she it's a she, difficult decision yes yeah yes you want you need to honor your parents and yeah it's difficult she did not like the, the young man at all so but you were happy that she was able to combine yes you. yes mm -hmm. okay so you had you had a good impact on students yeah. I, I think um, of course I've been much much longer at the high school mm -hmm. and um, my experience there has been interesting because whenever students come back um, they never say oh I remember that day you told us that <laughs> historical fact but they do come back and say remember the day you said da 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 and it often has to do with the little prayer that we would say at the beginning of class. Sometimes they were some of those little email stories, but they always had a lesson or a point. Or I wrote a lot of my own prayers that I tried to make them fit teenage life. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that's uh, that's the part I probably I miss most about teaching um, now that I'm semi-retired um, is that sharing of faith and life experiences with the with the students. You you told us you worked at Mercy College. You also work at Mercy High School. <coughs> did you have any other jobs along the way? Yes, I did. Okay, we'd <laughs> like to hear about those. <laughs> when I graduated, I graduated as a, a, pri a grade school teacher. Okay. That was my certification. Okay. So I taught around the, the state from 1965 until 1976. I taught in Muskegon, St. Uh, in Conning, uh, Ludington, Lansing, um, any um, were these all at Sisters of Mercy? They were all Sisters of Mercy schools. They were grade schools. Grade schools. I taught from um, well, one year I taught second graders. I had over fifty in my classroom. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I I loved the children. <laughs> I loved recess with the children, <laughs> but there were so many reading groups and. Sure. I just realized I wanted to be with kids who could discuss something. <laughs> so <laughs> the next year the principal asked me to to teach uh, um, a rather wild group of seventh graders who were going to be eighth graders. Yeah. And that's a big um, year. and I said yes. <laughs> and but it all it all worked out. First of all, I was very young. I had a an upright piano in my classroom and I taught them all the musicals and got them involved. I played the guitar also at that time so for mass, for the, for all these the singing, um, I, I got uh, um, some of the <laughs> the ones who could have been <laughs> troublemakers, I got them playing bongos and guitars and <laughs> And, and so easy to be in trouble. That's right. Trouble. And right. we had we had a great year. We had a great year. And then after that, it was, I always taught um, sixth, seventh, eighth graders. So that was about eleven years. And then I went to the co then I was invited to go to the college. And then you came went to, to the, the high college. School. And then in eighty one, I was invited to go to the high school, and I've been there ever since. Um, how has your ministry changed over the years? Um, you were in the city of Detroit for a while at, at Mercy College. In, you've been in Michigan and with the Sisters of Mercy. Well, um, <laughs> I, I, I quickly learned when I was in Pinconning <laughs> that I, I like the big cheese. city. <laughs> well, yeah, I do I like, like cheese too. I like cheese <laughs> too, but. <laughs> Um, but you know it was a very small town and um, everybody was related to everybody oh, 
Of course. So if you if you corrected a student <laughs> at, ten about it. at 10 o'clock, <laughs> no, the whole town heard about Ooh. it by 4 o'clock <laughs> because everybody was related. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, I had, it was a good time there. And um, uh, when I had those eighth graders, um, we had a lot of snow days, and they would come to the convent on their snowmobiles just to chat. We didn't have school that day. Well, the pastor could see the convent from across the parking lot, and he had a snowmobile. So he brought his snowmobile over for me to, to ride around with the kids. Now at this point I was in the modified habit. Okay. So I still had a veil flying in the, <laughs> in the breeze. <laughs> but um, so we, would, we were right on the edge of town. So there'd be four or five of the kids, eighth graders and myself, and we'd go running around the fields and on the snowmobiles. And then when the students went back home, he also had a little cutter to attach to it. So he came over, attached the cutter, and we brought two of the older sisters that were in the convent out, tucked them in under a blanket, and uh, I took them for a nice slow ride. That is one of the coolest <laughs> stories. So that was, that was I, I really had a great time with those eighth graders that I were supposed to be so challenging. I, I can't imagine. <laughs> Like snowmobiling with with uh, a sister. Yeah, well <laughs> they really, they really, really I went story. nice and slow for them, but yeah, they enjoyed still, it. And yeah. Especially like you say that with with the troublemakers. <laughs> wow. So how do you live out the mission of the Sisters of Mercy today? Well, at the high school, mm -hmm. everything focuses around the missions, um, the 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 five mercy values. Um, and um, can you tell us what they are? Uh, <laughs> mercy, <laughs> justice, option for the poor, human dignity, and service. Okay. Um, somebody made us, uh, well, in fact, it was an alum who made five beautiful banners, uh, each one of them with one of the mercy values. And they're, they're always on the stage for formal affairs, uh, for masses, otherwise there are other places around the school. Um, I, when I had a classroom and decorated, one of my boards always had the, the mercy values. Um, so it really, really promulgated at the school. And every year, uh, for quite a number of years now, um, we give what's called the Heart of Mercy Award, and students and staff can nominate anyone in the building that they feel lives out those mercy values. And in, in uh, 2014, I received the Heart of Mercy Award, and I, that really, that meant so much to me because oh, it, it, did. Um, it, it, it just was very special. Sure. Wow. Um, so what are you doing now? And in, 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 um, how has your transition, or how have you transitioned from academia? Um, I transitioned very easily. <laughs> <laughs> You've had it, right? <laughs> I think, uh, I, all right, I, I retired formally from teaching in 2013. I am still employed at the high school. Um, I work two days a week. They're eight to ten hour days, but it's it's two days, Tuesday and Thursday, uh, taking care of the attendance. Um, that office is very busy <laughs> because we have a system over there that allows for a lot of comings and goings. So um, that's constant all day long. I also take care of students if they get sick. Um, notifying their parents and so on um, but I think for the whole first year every <laughs> every day I'd walk out of out of uh, school and say oh 
thank you, God, I don't have any papers to correct tonight. <laughs> I don't have any lessons to plan because I did that for 30... 30-some 30 years. Yeah, 30-plus years. Well, actually, more than that. Next year will mark 50 years in education and 35 at the high school. So I, I'm going to do this for another year, and then we'll reevaluate. But those are some nice round numbers to <laughs> think about. <laughs> right. And it's not, I mean, you don't have far to go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you walk or do you drive? No, I, I walk around the property here all the time for mm -hmm. exercise. But when I'm going to school, it's rush hour. It's very difficult to get out of my, I live across the street. It's, it's part of the property, but I live across the street. It's a house we built for the priest when we built out here. Um, on, it's on, on 11 Mile. On the same side as, um, you call it the north side? It's on the south side, south side. of 11 it Mile. One, mm -hmm. It's a, a duplex. There are two bedrooms on each side. And we built it for the priest in the 60s when we moved out here um, because at that time we had full-time priests counseling and teaching theology at the high school and also in this building uh, teaching the novices. Oh, sure. But that yes. ended many, many <laughs> years ago, so now sisters move in and out. and So there are three of us uh, that live there now. I came out here. I moved into that house, it's called Bethany, um, about 13 years ago. And I mean, I, I loved when, <laughs> when I came out here because of the high school. I like to attend sports and, and uh, I was at the all night senior party the other oh, night. Oh, that's fun. And yeah. it's nice when I just have a, a less than a quarter of a mile to go home. Yes. <laughs> so I, I've loved living out here on the property. Um, I'm going to kind of switch it a little bit now. This was not part of our original interview, uh, but given the recent passing of Sister Kenise, we're wondering if you have a favorite story, a fond memory you would like to share with us. Well, uh, Kenise was very young when I was in high school at St. Mary's, uh, and my parents often invited um, the nuns from Midland or the nuns from Bay City or or Remus, St. Michael's, where our cottage is. It's up near Big Rapids. Um, and um, my parents often invited the nuns to come to the cottage. And then we'd put on a water skiing show for them. Or <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. And um, so this one time, um, the, all the nuns from both grade school and high school from St. Mary's were, were invited to the cottage. And the twins that I referred to were also at the cottage. And so the twins, myself, um, one of our science teachers, Sister Bede, Canice, and I don't know if there were one or two others, decided to go um, on this trail that really goes through a marshy part. Um, and we kids used to go back there and play and so on. But we knew to stay on the path. She oh, did not know to stay on the path. And Kanise stepped off and it was black muck that she <clears throat> sunk into up to her knees. It wasn't quicksand? Well, it was like quicksand like almost. Because it's up north. And we had to, you know, try to pull her out. She was in the old habit. She, her shoe came off, so we so had to reach, no, oh, we, we retrieved it. it, but we had to, you know, put our arm in to get it, I mean, <laughs> and, and it did not smell very good, <laughs> so we came back to the cottage, and she went and sat on the end of the dock, shoes, stockings, habit, with her legs hanging in the water to, 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 clean to, up. to clean them off. And I can remember her sitting there saying, I was going to get in this water one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we were scared when she yeah, stepped off. Definitely. It was black, and it sort of looked like 
black dirt, but it wasn't. It it it, it was a sinking. <laughs> So we were a little scared at first, but then we really laughed and laughed. And my dad has it in our movies, <laughs> her sitting on the dock, you know. So how did she take <laughs> Oh, Oh, she was funny. She was funny, yeah. I think I'm missing something, though. Is she taught you? No, um, well, no, she was at that parish, she was at the but parish. she didn't teach me. But you, obviously you knew her. But, yeah. Um, well, sort of I knew the grade school teachers, but my mom invited the whole convent oh, up. Everybody. Yeah, she okay. didn't just invite the high school teachers. Okay. That's, so that's a very, that's a cute story. <laughs> and then we, we were going to put on this water skiing show. My younger brother was very talented and did all kinds of tricks. I, I did a few, <laughs> one, you know, one ski in the air and, and so on. But uh, when I went out, they were all sitting on the beach. Some had jumped into the boat with my dad, and I'll tell you, when I took off on those skis, my heart, I was so scared. My heart was just pounding like crazy, but it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Okay, now, do you happen to have a favorite story or a favorite memory, um, Sister Agnes Mary Mansour? Um, well, um, she was at the college when I worked there. And was she president at that time? Yes. She was? Yes. Okay. And um, I didn't have too many occasions um, um, to talk with her in that capacity. But there was one, uh, just before I left, there was a difficulty that uh, occurred. and. Um, and I went to talk to her about it, and she just was so kind and so supportive and so understanding. And uh, I never lived with her, so I didn't know her in that way either. But I will, I'll never forget that meeting we had and how kind and supportive and... Um, that would tend to leave a... Yes, a memory. It, it would left a lasting impression on me. Well, our last question is, is there anything we haven't discussed that you would like to tell us or to expand upon that you, we've already talked about? Well, I, I, um, I already mentioned that the twins, you know, right. that uh, they, they entered and they're still, you know, they are retired now, fully retired, I, but they, they ministered, the they live in Lansing, uh, okay. near their, uh, they wanted to live there near their sister and their niece and grandnieces and so on, um, but um, they have ministered uh, in parishes and schools for the, uh, the last 55 years, <laughs> and um, they um, uh, have been great friends uh, all of these years. So I, I, Mount Rushmore is very important to them too. Oh, oh so, sure. you know, because that's where I sent them a postcard. Right. And oh. in fact, when I sent them a postcard to invite them to the cottage, after not having done anything for a whole year, their mom said, why is she inviting you? I mean, it just, it was such a God moment at Mount Rushmore. And when I got home and called them and said, you want to go to the college? They said, yes. And they're, they're both so funny. And we just had a great, great time at the cottage. And then at the end of that time, my, my parents obviously had talked about, um, and my dad said, do you want to go to St. Mary's? And, and I kind of, I, we were driving home. And um, I said, oh, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, you know, my dad said, well, you have 20 miles to make your decision. <laughs> so I remember sitting in the back seat. I was on the left side, and I didn't talk to at the twins anymore. I was looking out and going through all the, should I, shouldn't I, why should I, why shouldn't I? <laughs> and we got to the light at the edge of Bay City, and my dad said, well, what's your answer? And I said, yes. And so we went over to the convent. Sister Emerita, the principal of the high school, opened the door. She, of course, she recognized Mary and Rita. And my mom said, do you have room for another sophomore? And she said, sure. And we went in and 
sign me up and <laughs> the rest is history as they say. <laughs> now how large of a family were you from? I had three brothers. Yeah. Um, two older and one younger. And you're the, the I'm only the female? I'm the third, yes. And you entered the religious life and yes. you had a brother that entered religious life? Yes. And two of them didn't? No. Okay. Just wondering where the demographics. <laughs> yeah. And my it was hard on my mom yeah, because my um, she yeah. had all brothers. She had four brothers. And then I was the only girl. We were very close. And in those days, we didn't go home. And, you know, visiting Sundays. It, my, my parents would come for visiting Sunday, and and my mom would, she would start crying and worrying about four o'clock coming, you know, we only had two or three hours. <laughs> I'd say, well, mom, let's just enjoy these two or three hours, you know, um, it, but it was very, di very hard on her. You could only see you. We could only write, you know, well, you at could certain write? times, yes. What about phone calls? No, nobody no. made phone calls back, back then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm glad my mom lived long enough when things had changed, yeah. where I could go home, I could go to the cottage. Um, I, I'm really, I'm really glad that she lived long enough to, to have that. Now, how long did you wear the habit? Um, the old habit. I wore about f five years. Um, after college, I only taught in it one year. Okay. Um, again, I would pull up the skirt, push back the veil, and play marbles in the dirt with my little fourth grade boys. <laughs> <laughs> I I, that was in Muskegon. That. I had four, my first uh, class was in Muskegon. <laughs> then that summer, we went into the modified habit. And that was what you would be? Uh, that would have been 66, the summer of 66. So just two years after Vatican II. Mm hmm Oh, okay. And how long did that last? And then, all right, I had the modified habit for two years in Pinconning and Ludington. Um, it was during my time, 69 to 76, when I was at Holy Cross in Lansing. It was during that time where we could go into secular clothing. And um, I sewed. So wow. <laughs> I, I don't usually think of myself as a renegade, but <laughs> the minute, <laughs> the minute, I don't like things on my head. <laughs> and so the minute I could, I started sewing. Uh, one sister, we had a deal for a whole year. She packed my lunch every day as long as I sewed for her. <laughs> <laughs> what a deal! <laughs> well, it was a deal for, for me. Both, for yeah, because I right. didn't like to pack my lunch, so it was a, it was a deal for Neutral. me, too. Um, and, you know, but then my mom would say, Oh, but honey, you looked so cute in the habit. And I thought, it was so well, especially the old habit. Yeah. The old habit, we had five yards of wool serge pleated under a two inch leather belt. Wow. And then this, the wow. coif was heavily starched. And on hot days, it would get sort of gushy. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and you could smell the starch and it was, it, it was very uncomfortable in the summer. Did you have different material for a summer habit? Sometimes you had what was called like a work habit that was a little lighter weight, mm -hmm. but there still were so many layers. <laughs> Air didn't get through very well. <laughs> but our good habit was always this nice wool serge. Anybody else have any questions? That was really fascinating. <laughs>